about one and a half times the mass of the sun. Remember, it was uh, Chandra Sekar who predicted that. But there are cases whereby the mass of this object is much higher than that, 10 times the mass of the sun. And that, according to Einstein theory of general relativity, is not possible for a, white, for a neutron star. In other words, the white dwarf has a certain limit, cannot be more massive than one and a half solar masses, then it becomes a neutron star. The neutron star has its own limit, cannot be more massive than three times the mass of the sun, then it becomes a black hole. And there is little doubt in anyone's mind that we have several of these binary systems in the sky, which have very strong X-ray emitters. We have a donor star, we can see the donor star, we see the X-rays, and yet we know that this mass is 10 times the mass of the sun, and therefore it has to be a black hole. Um, the most famous object is called Cygnus X1, because it was the first one discovered. This stands for the constellation, this stands for X-rays, and one is the first X-ray source that was discovered in the constellation of Cygnus. When it was published in 1972 that this was probably a black hole, there was an enormous opposition among the uh, professional astronomers, violent objections against the whole concept that a black hole would actually exist. Uh, this died down, and I think it's fair to say that it's now generally accepted that Cygnus X1 is a black hole, and there are at least, at least another dozen of which we are absolutely sure that we have binary systems whereby this is a black hole. So now I've come to the end of the story. I've convinced you that white dwarfs exist. I've convinced you that neutron stars exist. And I have come up with reasonable evidence that uh, the black holes also exist. And they are the remainder of, um, of bad stars. They are burned out stars. Now, if a neutron star or a black hole finds a close companion, then uh, that close companion can really be a turn-on, so to speak, no pun implied. And this star can start to shine with an energy a thousand times more than it did before, except that it's all in X-rays. And so you see that astronomy is very nice. There is life after death for these stars. They first die, become a white dwarf or a neutron star or a black hole, but if they find the right companion in life, they come back to life. And the same may be true for you. I was going to say some question. Uh, <laughs> want to know why are, are black holes really black? Or is it just Excellent just question. For first of all, the name black hole is just a name, of course. Right? Like my name is Walter, that's just a name. There's not much meaning to it. But in the case of the black hole, there is probably a meaning to it. The, the reason being that no light can escape from a black hole. Nothing can escape from a black hole. A black hole is one-way traffic. Once you fall into it, that's it for life. You can never get out anymore. So the hole itself, the black hole itself, can never be seen. You can only see things when they approach the black hole, when I are at a certain distance, for which we have a name, beautiful name. We call that the event horizon. And so if here is the black hole, then there is here a sphere, which has a certain radius. And that radius is what we call the event horizon. As long as you're outside that sphere, you can change your mind and go back. But if you're inside that sphere, then you cannot change your mind anymore and you cannot go back. And the reason why you cannot go back is because the speed that you would need to leave from inside that sphere is larger than the speed of light. And we believe that that's not possible. And so I can give you the radius of that sphere. That radius R, for which we call the event horizon, is 2 mg. I wasn't going to give you any equations, but you three-year-old will really appreciate this. <laughs> Divided by c squared. And this is the mass of the black hole, which is here. This is a constant that you can look up in your physics book. It is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11 in SI units. And this c is the speed of light, and you have to square that. And so if you now ask me what is the radius of the Earth, if I squeeze the Earth into a black hole, you find one centimeter. So if you take the whole Earth 
and you squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it, and you make it smaller than one centimeter, it will become a black hole, and no light can escape. If you do the same with the sun, it has a radius of two miles, and then it becomes a black hole. The larger M, the sun has a larger mass than the Earth, the larger the radius. And this has a wonderful name, event horizon. And so when you go through the event horizon, you have the speed of light. You cannot come out anymore. Very good question. Very intelligent three-year-old. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>